Hello. Hi, welcome back all of you. Nana here and then we are into the next day's session on this uh, fusion uh, procurement implementation. So go there, I will not share the screen. <clears throat> go there. So today we are going to see an important activity. <clears throat> we are going to see an important activity on uh, uh, what happens on your asset and expense items and sub-inventory section. Right, it's a very important activity. Right, if you go there and then have a look at it. So let me open up. <sighs> see a CM train. So here I go there and then open up my uh, additional docs records file. So I'm now opening the additional docs records file. And then there I'm opening the third 03 document. On the additional docs records file, I'm opening the 03 document, which is asset expense items and sub-inventories, 031. Right? Double click on it. I'm opening it up, opening up this document actually. Now, we'll now take a typical example of an industry. So this industry is now uh, going to buy the billets from a big man of big uh, steel companies, and they're going to roll it. And then uh, they will now make it as a rod actually. Billets will be rolled as a rod, and then it will be sold in the market actually. This is what the business is. <laughs> So uh, they buy the kerosene. Kerosene is an asset item. Kerosene is an asset item. They buy it. And then the steel billets also they buy in the steel industries, big steel industries. This is also an asset item. So they charge these two things into your furnace. The furnace is known as a work in process. And then it is an asset sub inventory. Actually. So they charge these two things and then they are going to heat it actually. They will not heat it. After heating is completed, they will now take it to a rolling mill. There they are going to roll it into steel rods actually, which is known as a finished group. So this is the business. And then once when the steel rods are rolled, and then they will not tie it with a steel rope actually, a packing steel rope. So this is going to be an expense item. Right? The packing steel ropes are an expense item. And then they are not directly contributing into the manufacturing of the rolled rods actually. They will not be doing it. So you will not tie it with a steel rope actually. So this kerosene is another item. Steel billets is another item. The packing rope is an expense item. If anything is not contributing to the manufacturing process directly, they will all be expense items. And then uh, you are now running the business and then uh, you'll be having employees, your sales officers, everybody. And then I'm going to give a laptop for everybody. So whenever I hire a new person, I will be giving you what happens, a laptop as well as a suitcase. <clears throat> let's say, let's say he's a sales officer. For a sales officer, I will not give him a laptop and then a suitcase. Suitcase is a low value item, whereas a laptop is a high value item. But both of them will be configured as an expense item because the laptop and suitcase do not contribute to the manufacturing of the steel rods at all. So they'll be doing it. But in a laptop manufacturing company, they are asset items. If you go to Dell, or Dell, what happens is laptop is an asset item because that is the finished goods. The finished goods is what? La laptop. So the, the item is not categorized as an uh, asset or expense, but by the usage, they are categorized as an asset or expense. So now here is used for what happens uh, helping the sales offices and not on the rolling mill process actually. This process is not rolling it. So this is an expense item for us. So go there. And then we will now have a new higher stocking. Whenever a higher stock one happens, it will be kept on expense of it. So an expense item will be received from the purchase. Uh, purchase order will now make it for an expense item. And then we are now going to receive it on an expense sub mm -hmm. And then we will have a new higher issue and then will now be issued to employees actually. So that way it comes out. <clears throat> Then we'll have stationaries, my stationaries. So the stationaries are what? Paper, pens, and pencil, fine. They're all expense items. And then stationaries will be what happens a non-tracked expense, actually, because we cannot track the how much of paper is there, how much of pen is there, pencil is there. So they will all be non-tracked and then issued employees, and then it will not be recorded or not. Whenever any person goes into the stationary stores, he will not draw some two papers. He will not write anywhere that he has drawn two papers, actually. So that way it works. Fine. So this is an expense item, and then transacted onto a non-tracked expense of inventory. Here, the expense item tracked onto an expense of but it is tracked actually. You will now know how much of a laptop is now there, how much of suitcase is there, everything you can know. Whereas in a stationary shop, we cannot know how much of paper is there, pen and pencil, uh, erasers, sharpeners, all these things we cannot note down because they are all not tracked actually. So in a typical industry, these are all the transactions you'll make now. Right? Asset item into asset sub right? So here, kerosene is an asset, it will be transacted for us. Steel is another item, fine. Steel billets is another item. It will be transacting the assets. So, now, next is what? Asset item at an expense of inventory. 
So the same kerosene, what happens? We are going to send it to a maintenance sub inventory. Actually. It is an expense sub inventory. There, what happens? We will now use it for cleaning and lubrication of the furnace sector. So we call them as what? 50 liters of kerosene is expensed out. It is an expense sub inventory. We are expensing it away. Fine. It's called expense reception for maintenance of the kerosene is used for lubrication and then the cleaning of the furnace equipment. We are using it now. So this item, the asset item is now issued into expense sub inventory. This is the second set of transactions basically in the industry. Asset item and an expense sub inventory. The third is what? The expense item into an, into an asset sub inventory. Expense item will be received into an asset sub inventory. Right? I don't have any example here. Of mine. Expense item. Uh, yes, we can, we can say uh, is an expense item actually. And then we are now issuing it to rolling mill, which is going to be an asset sub inventory. So the, the expense item is now issued into asset sub inventory. Fine, that's the third one. The fourth one is what? The expense item is an expense inventory where we are now buying a laptop from, from a supplier, Dell supplier, and then we are now keeping it in an expense sub inventory because they are not contributing to the production. And so what happens? This is the fourth one. The fifth one is what? The stationaries which are there, they are all received into a non tracked expense. Fine. So the expense item is a non tracked supplier. So these are the typical four type of transactions which take place in industry in the purchasing front. From a purchasing front, we'll be doing all these four transactions. Right? And then it is essentially what happens, it works out to only four. Right? There's only four. The fifth one is also part of four because non-track into an expense and then uh, track and expense are all the same one. So from an accounting perspective, one, two, three, four are very, very important. Actually. So here uh, in a purchasing module, what we buy is very, very important. So we have to track what are all the money we are spending for buying it actually. What are the money you are spending it for buying? So that is known as a charge account. So the charge account is of a paramount importance for the purchasing model because the purpose of purchasing module is to reduce the spend or optimize the spend actually. So every company, there are many companies which will be concentrating on the charge account, right? How you are going to, what happens, hit the charge account actually. For all these four transactions, what happens, they would like to have a different charge account actually. Here, what happens, whatever you do it, the destination is going to be inventory. So we are going to begin with the destination type of the inventory. And then these are all the four transactions which are now happening on an industry. The last one is basically the hospital supplies is basically expense destination. It will be coming a bit later. This one will not come to you a bit later actually. <laughs> not now. So this one. So now what happens is we are now going to concentrate only on the, our own company area. Where what happens is this is an external location actually. It is not our company location. This is an external location. So yeah, some supplier is there in Bombay. And then he is now going to give what happens uh, supplies to the Ames Hospital in Delhi, actually. So Bombay supplier is going to give it to Delhi, Delhi, uh, Delhi Hospital. So that will be considered as what? The expense destination purchases, basically. Okay, fine. So this expense destination will be coming to a bit later, actually. <clears throat> now, we are now concentrating only on the, our own uh, sub-inventories, basically. So for our own sub-inventories, these are the four types of transactions for which what happens uh, we have to find out what happens, how many types of charge account are there, actually. How many types of charge account are there? So you know now. Now what happens? You go there, go back one level, and then open up. What happens? Go to the fusion procurement documentation. You open up, and then here you know, open up fusion purchasing accounting is the document. In the fusion procurement documentation, we have one fusion purchasing accounting. Open it up. So this is for monitoring the what happens? The charge account. Find double click. You're going to monitor the charge account. So first of all, we need this many accounts to be created. Actually, we have to get this many accounts to do it. So 1000, 1001, 1002, 1003 we already created. So we'll start to create from 1004 onwards. We will not start to create after 1002 actually. So we need to create these accounts now. So we are going to experiment on this account for charge accounting. Now. So go to the place finger account. I will not go there. Click on it. Will not experiment it. So click on it. You go to the setup and maintenance. You go to the setup and maintenance, and then you click on it, and then here you go to the search. You no, know, search. I will not say manage. Fine. Chart value set. Manage chart of accounts value set to the one point. Click on it. So click on the manage chart of accounts value set. Click on it. You know, query me P zero one. So P zero one is the one. Fine. Make a make a search. You no, know, search. You know, searching for. It. So you are not searching for it. So here we will now go to the accounting directly. So highlight the account, highlight the account, and then click on the manage values. So we are going to add these accounts. Okay, click on the manage values. So manage chart of accounts values is the one. P01, I'm querying it, highlight it, and then click on the manage values. Click on the manage values. So click on search, it will not show you all the present ones which are there. So all the four are coming. Now what happens, I'm going to add these values. Now. Thank you, Congress. 
So here, what happens? We're going to add it down. So 1004 onwards up to 1008 is expense actually. 48 is expense. So let me add it. So 1004, I'm going to add. 1004. 1004. So click on plus. Fine. This is an expense. Fine. Drop it down. In the also accounting type, what happens? Make it as an expense. So click on plus. And the 1005. 1005. This is going to be an expense. Expense. And click on plus. 1006. 1006. So drop it down. And then this is going to be an expense. So click on plus 1007. <clears throat> Go there, drop it down, and then make it as an expense. And then click on plus on that. The final expense account you're operating it is 1008 actually. Drop it down and then make it as an expense. Now, up to eight, we are not done. Now, now nine, ten, and eleven are asset accounts. Right? Nine, ten, and eleven are asset accounts. Okay. So click on plus 1009. 1009 is an asset account. Drop it down and then make it as an asset now. In this case, make it as an asset. So click on plus one. 1010. 1010. This is also an asset. And then 1011 is also going to be an asset. Thank you. Plus one. Plus one. And then you 1011. 1011. And then this is also going to be an asset. Now make it as an asset. No asset. Now, what happens? We now have two more accounts. Now, only one more account that is a liability account. Right? So, this what happens? I will now say is an expense accrual. We are now going to use it as what the 1001 is going to be an asset accrual, whereas 1012 I will be using it as what expense accrual actually. So, accruals are liability account. So, 1012. So, this I am going to use it for expense accrual actually. Drop it down. And that is a liability account. And that's it. So the minimum, bare minimum uh, accounts which are required have been done. Now, if I click on seven goals, but in there, whatever you'll be having thousands of accounts in a real scenario, they will all be created by the financial team. But for testing or purchasing, for purchasing accounting, fine, the charge account, fine, we need this much. To, I click on seven close. So the account has been created. So we'll again, go there and click on the manage values and then have over it. Whether all the accounts are there now, if I click on plus up to 1,012 has to be there. Okay. So 1,000, go there, go down, go down, go down. So you are able to see everything. <laughs> You can say go there. So drop it down and then you can see everything. Okay. All these things are there. So go to the top now. Finally, we cancel and then come on up. So the accounts are now created. Now, what happens? I am not going to have one uh, the exact name now. Fine, go there. So I will not create one asset supplementary and an expense supplementary because I'm going to give a copy and then do it now. Fine. I will not take a copy of it. Let me create one asset supplementary and then one expense supplementary. Fine. I'm not taking a copy. So that what happens, it will be easy for us to what happens, uh, demonstrate it actually. I will not go there. I will not go to manage. Fine. <clears throat> Sub inventory percentage fine. Look up percentage. So get the managed subinventory to look at this. Click on it. I will now put the organization what P011. Fine, go there. So click on OK. So by which we are not doing it. And then I will now create the exact name. Fine, click on plus. No, I'm not going to create the exact name. So click on it. And then paste it now. The location is what? Go there. P01. The location will be coming automatically. Remember, location is a mandatory one for transfer orders. For transfer orders, if you don't give a location, it will be giving some issues now. So click on seven close. Not then what happens? We'll now go there and then create our expense ability. Okay, and then give a tap and then take an exact copy of it and go that point and then click on plus. I will now create an expense. Ability. So click on the description and paste it and then click on the location of another so P01 and then give a tap. So click on save and close and then it's also done. So the sub inventories which are required for testing our case of asset and expense ability are ready. Only thing is what you go on and edit. I have to make it as an expense and click on edit. And then here, what happens? Remove the asset sub inventory, it becomes an expense sub inventory. If you remove the tick mark, it becomes an expense sub inventory. So, asset sub inventory. So, this is having the tick mark, whereas this is not having a tick mark. And click on that by which what happens? We are now completed the asset and sub inventory creation. Now, what happens? I am now going to create one asset item and one expense item. I am going to create an asset item. So, click on the home icon, we will now go there and then create one asset item and one expense item. <clears throat> I will now go to what product management. I'm going to go to the product management. Oh, 
product management. I go to the product information management. I'm not going to create. I have got to create only one item actually till now. And have a look at it. Thank you for it. The second item will be an asset item. The third item is going to be an expense item. Actually. We'll not go to the product information management. We'll not go to the browse items and then have a look at it now. So click on it. Click on the browse items. So I'll now put P01 now. So go there. It's a P01. Then click on search. So we have the first item ready now. Fine. We'll now create the second and third item. So click on them. Second and third item. Second item is going to be an asset item. Fine. Click on it. So click on create. Go there. So the organization is what? P01. P01. The master org is coming. I will now put my class over there. Now fine. P01. Let me put my class. The one when I put in my class, my purchase property is coming. Click on OK. And then I will now create the asset item and then expense item. So go there, click on it. The P0102, I'll now say asset item. <clears throat> now creating an asset item, fine, go there, come on. So take the it and then go there. And then paste it now, fine. If you go to the specifications, if you go to the specifications, and then the first specification is manufacturing, actually. The manufacturing, what happens? Uh, this costing enabled is an item defining attribute. And then this inventory asset value is a status attribute. So if these two things are wrong, it is an asset item, actually. The costing is an item defining attribute. This is basically IDA for entering in the, into the costing area, actually. And then the inventory asset value is S-minus. So, so I go to the associations, and then let me associate to the child or not. I go to the actions, and go to self -net. So we're going to associate the child or I will now say P01, and then enter now. <clears throat> I will not choose my child or Click on apply. So click on download. By which happens. The item is coming over here. Fine. So the second item is ready. P0102 is ready. Fine. Go there. Click on it. Another time. Fine. Save and close. Now we are going to create what the expense item. Now go ahead and then create our expense item. So you click on it, and then we'll now go to create them. We'll now create our expense item. So it's a P01. We go there and then put the master, and then I will now put my item class. Now find P01. So let me put item class. My so template is coming. Click on OK. By which order is not completed. Now we are going to create an expense item. The third item is an expense item. P0103. It is an expense item. So we have seen what is an asset and what an expense in the previous uh, demonstration. I'm going to take away and then click on it now. Basically. So yeah, I go to the specifications now. Fine, go there. Now I'm going to make it as an expense. By default, it will be an asset. Now I'm go there, click on it and then go there. I will now make it as what? No. So once when the inventory asset value is no, this is an expense item actually. Right? Cost, even though costing is enabled, it is an expense. It comes under expense. So go, so go to the associations and then here, what they go there. Go to actions and then go to select NAT and then we are going to add it. Now, fine, the P01 and then enter in. Select it and then click on apply. And then click on that. So it's all done. It's all done. P0101. Fine, what else? Fine, go there. I will now give a save and close now. Fine, save and close. So it is not done. We are not done. Okay, fine. So we are now completed this activity. So the product information manager. Two items have been created actually. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to set up all the six transactions now. Fine, there are six transactions that are there, which covers these four. These four, these four are covered by six transactions actually. Asset into an asset subinventory, asset into expense, expense to asset, expense to expense is now covered by six various transactions actually. So we are going to set up what happens the accounts for it. So whenever I transact an asset item into an asset subinventory, fine with that. So what I am going to do is I will now set up the one thousand nine for my asset subinventory actually. Fine. I'm going to go to the middle account, fine, middle account sub inventory. So I will now open up my what happens, my mapping set of middle account sub inventory. There, I will now provide my sub inventory and then I will now put 1009 over there. So I'll go there. I'll go to the place. So I will now go there. So click on the home account, the right hand side top, click on the name and then go to the setup and maintenance. So I come to the FSM area. So we come to the FSM area and then here, automatically go there, drop it down and then make it as financials. So we are not choosing set up as financials. No, fine, that. So here I will now go for manage mapping set. So manage percentage, fine. Map percentage, set percentage. So manage mapping set is the one, fine, with that. So here I will now go to the cost management. So not this one, sorry, I made a mistake. Now, fine. Not financials, but I have to go to what? Manufacturing and supply chain management. You go to the manufacturing and supply chain management, and then you query for the manage mapping set. 
you go to the manage mapping there you will now find the cost accounting is coming and click on the hyperlink on the manage cost mapping set of cost accounting and go to account and then the scope is already selected as cost management otherwise you have to select the scope now you have to select the scope as cost management now since it is already selected i am now clicking on the task straight away otherwise you have to select the scope actually i will now go and then query for what material account in this case what happens material account i am going to query on i'll say material so you'll have multiple things there like so middle account organization so i'm not going to set up at the middle account sub middle level so, so middle account sub inventory so this is the one now i'm going to set up so click on the hyperlink on the middle account sub inventory so click on the middle account sub inventory thank you that i will now add my coa first of all thank you plus no point i'm not accept the chart of accounts i'm going to add fine. click on it and then quickly write p0 p0 quickly write it will become in quickly if you write it what happens it will become in fine select it and then here what happens you going to set up so here in the bottom what happens you going to set up thank you plus so here, what I do is the secondary sub inventory is a sub inventory. Fine, exactly take a copy from this Excel sheet. No, fine, go there. So go there. It is going to be what asset sub inventory. No, fine, go there. So go there. Click on it. I will not tap it because it is case sensitive and there should not be any space at all. That is why what happens? We exactly taken a copy and then create the sub inventory assets. No, fine, go there. no paste it. Even if you give a space, also it will not come at all. Fine, go there. Inventory organization is what P zero one one. This account number. So what is the account number? Is one thousand nine actually. So go there. Click on it. One thousand nine. I am going to get. Fine, go there. I will not say 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1009. Click on it, fine. 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1009. I will not give a save and close and then come back. If I click on it. I will not give a save. No, if I click on save first. You are given a save. So for this one, I know that. <laughs> now what happens? I will not put the expense sub inventory now. Fine. I will not add one more thing. And on the same thing on the middle account sub inventory level. I know that. I will not click on plus. I will not add one more thing. So here you put it in expense sub inventory. Whenever you are going to transact on the expense sub inventory, the, the inclined wants the account, the charge account to be different. Now, right? Click on it. You'll not take it all right. So expense sub inventory. I'm not exactly taking a copy of it and then pasting it. Remember, no extra spaces and then no change of caps and small. Right? Click on it. So here he is saying 1004 has to be hit actually. That's what he's saying. So this will be given by the inclined number. 1004. And remember, this is activity you only have to set. Financials will not come here at all. They have got a lot of work to do. And so what happens? They will only ask you to set up all these things now. Right. Remember, it is your job. It is not a financial scheme job. So click on save and close. It is not done. We'll again go back and then make a check. Now click on it. No, go back and check. You've got only one chart of accounts there. Fine, click on it. And then see that both the accounts are there. Fine. For the asset sub inventory, what happens? 1009. And then the expense sub inventory, 1004 is there. Fantastic. Fine, go that one. Give a cancel. Now, <clears throat> what happens? Next is what? These two are now set fully. <clears throat> We are now set up these two things. Now we are going to set up what the at the org level. Fine. So it is called middle account inventory org. Now we are set up at the sub inventory level. So we are now set up at the sub inventory level. Now we are going to set up at the org level. Org level. I will now click on the middle account organization of fine. And then here, whatever they go there. And then we already have this account of fine. We already entered it. Fine. You go to the query mode and then query for it. Fine. We already entered it. Fine. Easy to query for it. We'll have this. So at the org level, what, what are you saying is that 1010 is the one that you want. So let us not make a change. Now, click on it. So we already have it. Now, click on it. I will not click on it. And then I will not change it to what? 1010. And that's it. So go there. So go there. Click on save and close. And then go it. So it is not done. Again, go there and then make a check. Now, click on it. Make a check. Now, click on it. And then go there. Is 1010 is the So just make a check. And then again, because sometimes what happens, it doesn't get entered at all. So go inside and then make a check. Now we are going to test this one. Now the end client is now making a purchase or acquisition. So click on the home account. These three accounts we are going to make a check. Now I click on it. No go there. So I will now go to the procurement. Now I go to the procurement. I will now go to the procurement. Now I go to the procurement. Procurement is before it. Go there. Go there. Before the product, go to the procurement. And then we don't have any purchase requisition appearing over here because they are now modifying it for what happens your new one. Fine. Uh, uh, that one is coming. Fine. So that way the, the thing is coming. Fine. So you click on the more, sh more show more than click on the shop. So click on the shop. So one responsive, fine. Responsive self-service procurement is coming. RSSP is coming very soon. So once when it comes, it will be coming on the main procurement area. So till the time, what happens, that will be coming on 25C only. Fine. Next year, uh, the third quarter, actually. So click on shop. Now, fine. Click on shop. And then you are going to go inside. So click on shop. You are now going inside. Procurement and then click on shop. We are now going inside now.
Now, the first activity is what? You go to the more task and then click on the update requisition preferences. And then you have to update what? You're now going to buy for this location. Actually, Remember, here, the procurement is the purchase requisitions and purchase orders are location specific, actually. Even though the location and org are tight, the org is not having that much of a significance. We don't write the org anywhere at all. I mean, we write only the location. Location. And then the one inventory and then RML is located. So click on cancel. Now, what happens? We are now going to create a requisition. Fine, go that one. Now, this guy is now going to, this is where the first user is now creating a requisition. Fine, go that. He is now going to set up test what this one. Now. Asset into an asset sub inventory. He is going to make a test. Now. Asset into an asset sub inventory. He is going to make a test. So, whenever he makes a requisition for asset into an asset sub inventory, he can now see the charge account will be 1009. That will be getting populated. That is what the end client wants. Go that one. So click on the more task and then click on the enter requisition lines. I will now put the second item. The second item is an asset item, actually. The second item is an asset item. So let me populate the second item over here. Fine. The P0102 is an asset item, actually. I will now choose asset item. You go there, asset item, and go there, click on it. And then here, what happens? You go there, click on it. And then here, he is now going to specify the sub inventory also. Fine, click on it. Go down. So you're going to specify the sub inventory. Fine, go there. So the sub inventory is not this. No, fine, go there, click on it. You'll now specify the sub inventory. Is it an asset sub inventory? So the requester is saying that I would like to buy one quantity of the asset item and then I want to receive it on the asset sub inventory. So naturally what happens, if you go there, now uh, this is not 1010, it must be what? 101019. So once when you add to cart, it will be showing properly. You know, when I add to cart, it will be showing properly. So click on add to cart. So go there. in the existing, there is only already one item in the cart. Now fine, let us now go there and then delete that cart. So only when you add to cart, what happens, it will be showing properly. Fine, click on it. I will not add to card. Hmm. So we are not deleting the existing uh, cart area. One incomplete requisition was there for yesterday, actually, for the first item. So we are not deleting it. And then we are going to go for it. We will not add to card on this. Moment. So it is on the assets of identity. So the account is not exactly populating, but uh, it will not go there. Go to add to card. It will not show 1009, actually. Go to add to card. And then have a look at it. It will not show exactly 1009 because that is the asset account which the end client wants. So once when you add to cart and then when you review it, we can very well review it. So while reviewing it, it will not show you the exact account on which what happens. We have to do it now. So go there is not added. Fine, go there. So click on it. And then we will now click on the hyperlink of it and then click on the review. Now. So we are going to review it. So once when you review it, it will not show you exactly 1009 as the account which you have to do. The bottom, what happens? You can now see that the item and the account will be coming up. <clears throat> One second. It's already added. So we are not reviewing it actually. Right? Not going to the review page. I'm going to the review page. So it's not going to the review page. Not going to the account. Then go there. In the bottom, what happens? You can now see it's 1009. So if you say that I don't want to receive it in the asset sub but I want to receive an expense sub he is not choosing what the expense of it. If you choose it, what happens? The charge account will not change to 1004. For different, different type of transactions, different charge account will be hitting actually. No, go there. Right. I will not, what happens? Go there. I will not drop down and then change it to expense. I will not change it to expense. Expense. And then if you save it, it will now become 1004 actually. Now account, charge account will become 1004. So click on save. Now the charge account will now become 1004 actually. No, so now, while the requester is creating a requisition, he may not be knowing in which sub inventory he has to receive actually. So go there. So he will not say blank. If he is not aware, he will not give any sub inventory at all. So the requester may not know while you are receiving it from the supplier in which sub inventory it received. Then what happens? It is blank actually. So if it is blank, then one and two will not fire at all. The sub inventory level accounts will not fire. So if it is absent, then what happens? The org level account will fire actually. There is 1010 actually. If you go there, 1010 will fire. If you know there is no subunity, fine, go there, on it. And then click on save. The org level account will be firing actually. And see, 1010 is firing. But if you put some other sub inventory, fine, you're not going to put RMS. For which, what happens? We don't have any, any entry at all in our mapping set actually. So then also, no sub inventory will fire actually. Go there. I will not change it to what something now. Fine. Go to the assets of inventory and then give a save. So give a save now. Fine. Click on save. Now what happens? 1009 will be coming. 1009 is going to come. Go there. So if you say is what raw material stores. 
it says raw metal stores. Then what happens? We don't have any entry on the mapping set. And so these two will not fire at all because we, we must have an entry for every sub unit actually. If not, the sub unit is not having entry, the third will automatically fire actually. RMS is not having any entry at all. So now what happens? 1010 will fire. You put RMS and then give a save. Now what happens? It will be 1010 actually. 1010. So we are now seeing the three combinations of assets now. Fine. Asset into an asset, asset into an expense, and then what happens? No sub inventory at all. Now we are going to configure the 4516. 4516, we are going to configure. Okay. So here, what happens? Is now give it. What happens? Cancel and then go to the shop now. If you click on shop, what happens? It will be coming out of it. So click on shop. And then go there. So I will now go to the cart and then I will now delete the cart actually. I will not delete the cart. So the cart is empty actually. There is nothing in the cart at all. Now what I'm going to do is I will not go there. I will not right click and then duplicate. You right click and then duplicate. We will now again go to the management picture and click on it. We will not click on the name. And then here what happens? You go to the setup and maintenance. You go to the setup and maintenance. And then here what happens? You go there. So click on it. We will not go to the search. No, fine. Not search for it. You have to go to the drop and then go to the management picture. Mm -hmm. Manage percentage fine. Map percentage fine. Set percentage. So we go to the manage mapping set. So of the cost accounting we are choosing, now I click on cost accounting and then go there. So click on it. <clears throat> okay, fine. This is what this is the one you're choosing now. And then expand it and then query for the expense. 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 So click on it. This is the expense account. <clears throat> So expense account. So here, what happens? We got three levels there. In the uh, and the material account, we have got only sub inventory and organization level. Here, we can even specify the item level. So sub inventory is the least priority. If no sub inventory is specified, then it will not pick up from organization. Here also, if nothing is specified, then what happens? It will not pick up the item. Item is the top priority. If you have specified any expense account item, that only will populate. These two will not populate at all. Even though all sub inventory, everything is the top priority. This is the least priority. So whereas for asset, there are only two levels actually. There are only two levels. Item is the top priority next one. So we are going to test only these two things. I will not click on the expense account sub inventory. On the expense, I query find that one. I will not click on plus. <clears throat> so click on plus. So here drop down find uh, is that P0 and then entry. Select it and then go down. <clears throat> so click on plus now. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do is expense item into an expense is my into an expense account. What happens? I will not. What happens? Uh, I will not. Uh, I have not given what sub unit name is what sub one expense. So expense item into an asset sub unit actually. I will not do it asset sub unit. So I will not go there. Click on it. I will not take a copy of the asset sub unit. The expense item if I am transacting it to an asset sub unit. So go down now. So here what happens? You select it and then go down. And then here what happens? You go there. I will not put the paste it exactly because there should not be any space at all. And then. Inventory organization what P011. So if an expense item is now getting transacted the asset sub inventory, so what they want is what they want 1004 to be hit actually. So here what happens? 1004 to be hit. <clears throat> I'll go there. So I'll say 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1004. And click on plus. <clears throat> so when an expense item is transacted in the expense sub inventory, go back on the expense inventory, you click on it and then give a tap and then take exact copy of the sub inventory name. Hang on. I will not paste it over here. Click on it. And then again, the same organization find P011. So it is going to be 1005. Now. 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1005 is account. So click on it. And then we will not save it. So click on save and close. And then we will again come back and then make a check. Now. Click on it. Always come back and check because sometimes what happens is the entries do not get entered at all. Go there. Go there. And then go there. So here we have a P01 COA. Fine. 1004 and 1005. Asset and asset is 1004. Asset and expense ability is 1005. So we are now configured these two. Now, if the sub inventory is going to be absent, then what happens? It will be getting at the org level. Right? Expense is going to hit at the org level. So 1006 is up. So go there, click on it, and then give a cancel now. Now, what happens? We are now coming to it only for viewing it. So when you when you come for viewing it, do not give a save or save and close. Give a cancel and then come out of it. There is a software logic. So once when you enter it, what happens? You give a cancel and then come out of it. Now, what happens? I go to the expense account organization level. I click on the hyperlink on the expense account organization. So click on plus one. So at the organization level, you're going to click on plus one. And then here, you click on it. And then here, what happens? You put 
P0 quickly, PN0 quickly, then it gets automatically selected. You have to be very cautious in selecting it actually. So P0 and so on, so go that account plus now. Here, no sub is to come, only organizational will be one. And P011, go there. So the account is what? 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1006 is the account. So go there. So click on it and then give a save and close. And then again, come back and then make a check. You're going to make a check. Now go to what? Expense account organization. So click on the expense account organization and then make a check. Now I the account. Everything is coming. So choose yours now. It's not visible actually. Fine. Go to the, the top, the query by what find the P01 and enter in now. Click on enter. It won't show you now. Click on it. And then go down and then have. So it's 1006. It's very correct. So it's not saved. So ensure that it's not saved. It's not saved. Or when the other command, command do it. Now click on cancel. So we are now done. All the three remaining three accounts of expenses now. Fine, fine. 456 is not saved. 456 is not saved. Now, whatever they go there, we will now create a requisition. So click on it. I will now go there. So click on the more task and then enter requisition. This time, what happens? An expense item is going to be put on the requisition line. What's the P01? Zero, uh, zero 03 now. Fine. Zero 03 is an expense item. Fine. P0103. Zero zero so P0103 zero zero is an expense item. So we used the previously P0102. Now, an expense item is put on the requisition actually. <clears throat> Right. It is not put on that what's called in this thing. Right. Expense item is not put. Right. So here, what I'm saying is what? It has to be an asset sub right. Asset sub right. So the fourth one, we are testing it. Right. It has to be 1004. Right. And then here, what happens? You go there. I will not change it to what? Asset sub right. So at this point, don't look at the account. Right. Some account is coming. Right. But don't look at the account. Right. And then add to cart and then look at it. Right. At this stage, don't look at the account. Whatever charge account is coming, don't look at it. So click on add to cart and then there you look at it. Right? Click on add to cart. There only it will not reflect correctly actually. So click on the hyperlink on the cart now. And then click on the review. So once you review it, what I want to show you. So it is now 1004. It is 1004. Now he says that I don't want to transact on assets of inventory. I go there, click on it. I will now say I want to what happens. You go there. Expense sub. <clears throat> Expense sub. So if you make it so commit, what happens? It will now become 1005. So click on save. So if you give a save, then only what happens, the accounting will be re-triggered actually. The accounting is now getting recurred. And then what happens, it goes and shows one person. And he says that I don't want which sub inventory or uh, we have no configured accounts only for asset and expense and not for RMS. And then if you say nothing, then what happens, it will know. The org level account will not trigger. So requester need not enter the sub inventory because he may not be knowing on which sub inventory it has to be received while he is creating a demand. Because every requisition is nothing but a part of a demand. The demand is now created in the mechanical department of a pump and then electrical department of motor, etc. etc. And then the civil department may be creating for cement or bricks or stone or something like that. And so they will now make different different requisitions by different different department. And then at the time, if they don't know on which subunit they had received, they can leave it blank. So now if you give a save, what happens? It will now go to what? 1006 now. If I click on save, it will now go to 1006. So it's now 1006. Now you may do what the other thing now, fine. We are not on it. So uh, an employee may be what happens uh, creating yeah, what's called yeah, let us say he is now going to award an AMC contract for the maintenance of all the computers actually. Right. So once when an AMC contract is awarded, then what happens uh, his expense account will be charged. And they will not be received anywhere at all. Fine. These AMC contracts are not receivables actually. It is a service item actually. So whenever he creates a service item, then what happens? Uh, we have to, what happens, we have to populate the employee's expense account. Let us say, I'm not going to populate the employee's expense account. So this employee, how many expense purchases he has made now? Right? This is not an expense purchase. It is basically a service purchase, actually. So over a month of period, what happens, we cannot see. He has now made an AMC contract now. And then uh, after a week's time, what happens, he, you know, he is now giving an award for laying of cables, actually. Two kilometers. They have to dig the sand for approximately one feet down and then lay the cable, actually. Cable laying for two meters, two kilometers, actually. So you'll not do it. And then some maintenance activities, some service activities, you'll be ordering it. So they are all tracked by the employee so that company can understand this particular employee. If I go there, this particular employee, say Nayantara. So Nayantara, how much of a material, how much of expense purchases he has made, she has made in the past one month. And then they will not try to optimize the purchase basically by seeing the one. So all these accounts are what? For optimization. They will not take a report on all these accounts. And then they will not see how much of money is being spent and then they will now instruct the appropriate team to what happens they reduce the expenses fine so we are now sending too much of money on sand or they will now inquire about why it's so 
Fine. So they will now analyze and then optimize your purchases basically based upon the spend actually. So spend optimization or spend reduction is the ultimate uh, or the aim of a purchasing module. And then these charge account are going to help the management appropriately. Now, Nayantara is now ordering for our AMC contract actually. Now, we have to what happens, uh, put the 1007 on Nayantara's expense account actually. So, you know, first of all, put them. No, go there, click on the management. No, go there. So, what you have to do is we have to go there and then click on the home icon. We will now go to the my client groups. We will now go to the my client groups. There, we go to the person management. So, in the my client groups, we have already seen yesterday about how to add this person management onto the my client groups. It doesn't come at all. So, we created a custom human resource specialist role and then added it. And then we synced it to the transaction system, the import user role, as well as the, your LDAP. So, it all came here. Fine. So, that you have to follow. Fine. Whenever you do it, click on the person management. My client groups and then person management, you're going there. Fine. Click on it. And then here, what else? I will not go there. So, in the person management, I'm going to query the employee. The first employee, fine, is the EMP1, comma, space. P01 underscore. That is the way you have to do. Last name, comma, first name. I click on searching. <laughs> you know, searching for it. I click on it. You know, search for it. <laughs> so once when you search for it, what happens? Let me coming. So click on the hyperlink on the employee. Right? Click on the hyperlink on the employee. It will now open up. <laughs> Maximize it and work on it. Ah, whatever. Why is this coming like this? I don't know. So it will now come up. So here, what happens? You go there. So click on the drop down the edit and then. Click on update now. Fine. A yeah, correct will not tell you which employee is corrected. Update will not keep a record. Fine. It will not keep a version of a record. Now. A new version of the record is now getting loaded. So, uh, as CM team always recommended to go for update so that later on we can even very well understand which guy has made update actually. Correct will not note down the employee's name who has performed the correction actually. So, update is the best preferable mode. Fine. Click on it. It will not create one more version of a record. Fine. We'll click on it. In the back end actually. So, go there. Here, yeah, drop it down and then make it as what assignment change. So action is what assignment change and then click on okay fine by which whatever we are now changing the assignment of this one. So we are now going to provide the Nayantara's expense account. Fine, go, there. go down, go down. The bottom whatever they'll be having expense account. <coughs> so go there. Probation period from the direct reports. Fine. Expense information is what is. So in the expense information, I will now put 1,007. Fine, that is what the plan is. So for Nayantara, it is 1,007. So once when they query on 1,007, what are all the expense purchases which she has made, we can very well monitor it. Fine, she has now made for the AMC contract now. Later on, what happens is she has made for cable laying, digging, and then one for what? Repairing a transmitter. And then uh, what happens is so many things are there. Fine. So many services, and then uh, he, she has an order for a spray painting of uh, certain things. For which, what happens? Some external party is going to come inside and then do the spray painting. So all these things comes under service. So they will now be able to track how much of money is being spent by Nayantara for all these activities. I will know this is what ten iPhone, hundred iPhone, one thousand seven is the one. The expense account. So we are now given only one information on the expense account. Fine. Every account will be getting charged under the purchase order, purchase requisitions, purchase requisition, purchase order. So having done this, what happens? You go there. So click on save and then review and then save it. Right? Click on save. So the save is the first activity. Right? Click on save. You now saving it now. Right? Click on save. Mm -hmm. So once when the save is completed, then you go there. So we are now saving it and then we are now going to review it now. So her expense account will be the charge account for all the service purchases which she is making actually. Whatever expense purchase is making it, one of will be coming. So after the save is completed, what happens? You go there and then click on the review now. So click on OK now. Fine. So click on review now. You know, reviewing it. So once when you review it, it will now show you the expense and the change now. Fine. When you're reviewing it, what happens? The change will be shown over here. There's no change at all. Fine. No change at all. Fine. And then the bottom we have changed. <clears throat> Go down. So you go down and you can see what happens in the bottom. The default expense, the current value, the proposed value is coming in the second line. This is the one. This is the default expense account has been changed actually. So go down. So this change has happened fine. First, what happens after the save and then review, then only you have to submit now. Fine. Do not go to submit directly. Fine. Click on submit. This is the order of change, order of working now. Fine. Click on it. So first save and then review and then submit. Now, the Nayantara's expense account is set. Now, she is now going to order for AMC contract. Right? 
So go there. Now we'll now go to the shop purchase requisition kind of account. This activity is now complete. If I click on close it, you can close it. You know, close it. Go to the page. So what are you going to do? I will not give a shop. Come back to the shop. I'm click on the shop. And then there you'll be having already one account of I will not delete that shopping cart. Delete. So the shopping cart is not having anything at all. Now what I do is I will not go there. Now this Nayantara is now entering a requisition for an AMC contract. Now I click on it. Go there. So here instead of goods, she will not change it to what? Fixed prices and services. This is basically a service purchase actually. It is not no more goods now. So she is now first of all change it what fixed prices and services. So the, if it is the one item will not come at all. So in the description, she is going to write what is the AMC contract. AMC contract. And then category is very important. Right? So category. So descriptions are basically category based. I am not putting an existing category. Otherwise, what happens? You have to create a category that I already taught you in the beginning itself. So amount is let us say thousand dollars. The AMC contract, you know, say what happens for three months. So having put these things, what happens? You go there and then see. Now I click on it. In the bottom, you will be getting automatically one thousand dollars. And then these charge accounts are editable only for service purchases. Whereas if you are going to do any of these six, these six, they are not editable at all. It will not automatically pick up from the mapping set and then populate on this. So for the seventh one, we can overwrite. She feels that not one thousand seven. Even change it to something else also. She can very well change it to something else. So go there. You can even make a change to what? 1,000, uh, let's say, uh, 8. No. She can override it. She can override it in this place. I will add to cart. Now, if I click on add to cart. So she has overridden the charge account and the requisitioning creation area itself. I will now click on the hyperlink of it. And then click on review now. Go down now. Can you see that problem? So 1,008 is coming. <laughs> Nayantara is my dream girl. And so what I mean, I have not chosen this example. You can choose your man pasand right? When you are working on it. No? <laughs> now, what she says is what? Oh God, fine. I am not doing it for the mechanical department. It is not, oh, should my account has to come. So in such cases, what happens? Uh, she would like to override her account with a default account. The mechanical department's account. So with the click on shop. So this account, she don't like it because she becomes responsible for all these accounts actually. Right. Why are you spending it? So management will be asking it. She has not spent anything for her own. No, right? She has done only for the department, mechanical department. And so what happens? We are now going to what? Set up the preferences. As well. right. Click on it. Update right. So once when she logs in, what happens? You know, say the mechanical department's charge account is going to put. So click on plus. Click on plus. So here, what happens? Is the 1002 is the charge account. So the mechanical department. You will now say make right, department fine. Right? Charge account. He says that my account should not come, but what about the department's account? Itself? So, we'll say 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1002 is all gone. We'll go there. So, click on save and close now. Right? On save and close. So, once when you give a save and close, now what happens? Now say again, go there and then make a check now. Right? Click on the update requisition process, whether it's there or not. Right? Go down and have a look. So, now what happens? Her account will not fire. This will now supersede the employee's charge account. Employee's expense account will be superseded by this account actually. So whenever she makes anything, it will all be mechanical department's account and not her account actually. You can very well superseded. Now she is now going to make a requisition. Thank you. We will now go to enter requisition lines. So first of all, she will not change it to what? Fixed price and services. Is a service item. So I will now say it is called cable laying. Cable laying. Otherwise, something else I will say. Nayantara dance. So category is what? I don't know, say miscellaneous. Miscellaneous. So amount is what? She is now charging $100 per hour actually. <clears throat> I don't know, say for one hour. So go there. Don't tell this example to others. No, fine. <laughs> they will beat you. <laughs> so go there. Click on it. $100. And then go there. Now what happens? 1002 is the charge account and not 1007 at all. Her charge account is coming. And then go there. Click on add to cart. You can add to cart. And then go there. So click on the hyperlink of it. And click on the hyperlink of it. And then go there. Click on the review. And then review. You can now see this thing. Go there. So 1002 is coming. And again, you can very well override it. 
So the creator, Nainthara, can very well override the charge account, whatever has got defaulted, only for expense, that is service purchase. So seven and eight are for service purchases. Whenever she makes any service purchases, she can very well override the account and then do it. Now. Fine. But anyhow, she is just to respond to the management. And management may ask you anything. So it must be with the guidance of the management actually. So now what happens if we go on and see? We are now seeing this many now. If I click on it, I will now go to the shop again now. If I click on shop again. We are now seeing this many. I will now go to the plot and then let me what happens is delete this item now. So click on the more and then go to the update requisition for us. So now what happens with a destination type of inventory we have seen. Expense we will not see. For inventory, what happens we are now seeing asset into asset, asset into expense, and then expense into asset, expense into expense, and then service items. Right. So this many purchases are there basically. So we have seen all the things. So we have now seen all the four. All the four. Plus service purchases also we have seen. Fine. Right. So we will now see all these things are applicable for expense destination also. Expense destination also, all the four are applicable, plus service purchases also is applicable. And then we will now have a look at expense after we create the purchase orders basically. Great, now find these orders. <clears throat> so if you any doubt is that, you can very well contact me and then ask me now. So we are now completed what? Asset and expense items received into asset and expense of inventories where the charge account are going to vary based upon our setup section. Now, we will now go for a break and then at 3.15 p.m. we will now assemble back and then we will now begin supplier creation. Got it, no Okay, sir. So, we will have a tea break now, fine. So, at 3.15 p.m. we will be back. I will be remaining on the same screen only. I will not stop the recording. Okay, okay sir. Okay. Okay. Open up your video. Fine. Come on. Say, you are, have you understood it now? This is a very tough topic of charge accounting. Right? <clears throat> Can you say you understood it? Oh God, nobody is even opening the video. Now. <laughs> okay, there you are. Fine. So let me. What happens? Uh, okay. Okay. We will now begin at three fifteen after the after the break. Now, thank you. So I will not go there. So I will not stop the recording. <clears throat> 